Coming up today on That LTD Life, let's talk about ViewFlip. This is a remote collaboration tool that will allow you to provide tech support to anybody in your company or maybe even just grandma who's struggling with their PC. Save the gas money and just do everything on your machine. The cool thing about ViewFlip is it works on both Mac and Windows machines and is interchangeable. So one person could be on one platform and another person could be on the other and they can talk to each other without issue. Now, if you don't know who I am, I am Dave from clientamp.com and I'm about to give you a bird's eye view of ViewFlip as I try it out and show you all of the features. If you wanna support this content, I've got a link down below so you can click over, grab something from AppSumo or maybe even get a code for ViewFlip. Now, let's talk about how this testing is going to work because as you might be able to tell, I've got an iMac there behind me and I've got this screen here that you see. Those are two different machines and I've already got ViewFlip installed on both. So in just a moment, I'll walk over to the iMac and then grant access to my main machine. Seems like no big deal. They're probably on the same network, right? No, actually I'm using my cell phone as a secondary network. So these machines will need to talk to the satellites in order to interact with each other. Now I do have the $49 plan over at AppSumo. That's gonna be good for two devices or two users. You do have to have, I wanna make this very clear, you need to have someone at the machine to grant access to the machine. You will not be able to remotely connect into the machine without prior permission. If you need more than just two seats, you can get tier two for 10 seats, tier three for 25 seats, or all the way up to tier four for 50 seats. Getting ViewFlip installed is dead simple. You can just go to viewflip.app and here is a download button. It does work on both Windows as well as Mac, as I already mentioned. Then you just basically create an account, give yourself a username and sign in. You'll be good to go. There is just maybe a few more hurdles if you're installing this machine on a Mac, just due to its intense security settings. You have to make sure you grant access to the screen recording and the microphone and all of these other things that could be made be a little bit daunting for a non-technical user. So if you do have access to the machine in the real world first to set up the software, that's probably best if you're dealing with less technical people. However, it's certainly not very challenging. You just need to make sure you click all of the right boxes in order to get the screen sharing to work. Now, after you've got ViewFlip installed, you will see their icon in the menu bar or in the taskbar on Windows. You just simply click on it and it opens up this sidebar here. And you can see that it puts an outline around my windows. So if I had multiple windows here, let me open up another one. I'll just do a second uh, Safari window here. And now if I open up ViewFlip, I'll choose this window, hit the ViewFlip button, it's gonna grab that window. So whatever window is in the foreground is what's gonna be selected for sharing. It's not gonna be your entire screen unless you specify that you want it to be your entire screen. So I'm gonna go back to the AppSumo window here and what I can do is connect to my other user. So I've got Dave Swift 2 over here. That's my secondary account. My primary one is Dave Swift. So I can just click right here and then it's gonna send, you probably heard a little whistle, the microphone picked it up, uh, notifying me that I have an invitation to view a screen. I'm actually gonna cancel this and now I'll instantiate that from the other side. So I'll go over to the iMac and then invite this machine to view the iMac. Right, so here is the notification. You can see I can accept, decline, and then I have a microphone option over here, whether or not I want to send the audio back and forth. So right now I'm gonna do it without microphone because obviously we are very close to the other object, even though it's going through the satellites with the secondary internet connection, but uh, I definitely don't wanna hear my own voice coming through the iMac speakers. So I'll hit accept and now it is connecting and believe it or not, they both have the AppSumo screen open and I can go ahead and utilize the machine. Works pretty good. There's a slight delay. It's going through my cell phone connection, but let's go ahead and check out maybe Reun over here. Is that how you say that? I still don't know. And now I can browse the internet, choose a plan, even make a purchase if I wanted to. Now I want to be clear. I can only see this window. I can't open up another browser window. I can't engage with the finder and you know go through the file system. None of that is available to me unless the other system grants it. There is a little toolbar over here. So if I wanted to turn on my microphone, I could do that. And then this button right here disables remote control. I can't do that as the receiver of the window, but the sender could click on that and then no one would be able to control the machine. They could basically be in more of like a presentation mode. If you click this button, it will go to full screen and I'll be able to see the entire machine. Let's go ahead and try that. All right, I just clicked the full screen mode. I've got uh, double tools over here because now you can see 
the system running on the iMac. And now I have complete control. I can open up the Finder and you know do anything I want on this Mac. There is a little bit of lag. You can see as I move my mouse around, the real mouse kind of drags behind it, but it's still totally usable for you know more manual type of tasks. I probably wouldn't do anything creative here like edit video or do music production through a screen sharing, but if you wanted to show someone what you're working on in one of those applications, I think it would work just fine. Typically with this type of remote collaboration, it's more like, hey, oh, you need to go up there and you know fix a little thing, or maybe we just need to get some software installed for grandma, something along those lines. By the way, this last icon over here in the toolbar, that just pauses the screen share. So if you need to do something where you don't want anyone else to see it, like enter a password, and you're worried it's gonna show on screen, you just pause the screen share, and then you can press it again to unpause it. When you're all done with the screen share, of course, just hit the X, and now we are disconnected. I wanna show you a few of the settings here, but that is the essence of it. You basically just need to have everyone sign up for their own account, then you just find out their screen names and they'll all show up on your sidebar. It's super easy to connect. I've just opened up a text window here, a sticky, so that I can show you the view flip interface because you do have to have at least one window open to even see this sidebar. Now, once you've opened the sidebar, you can see your personal connections over here and you can invite new users to your team by clicking on the invite button. You just enter their email address, they will get a notification, sign up for a user account, and you'll be able to communicate with them. Of course, you need to have an available team member based on the plan you bought over at AppSumo. If you do have a team of say 50 or so, and you've got a few people that are maybe more important or you connect with more frequently, you can pin them so they stay at the top of the list right here. They still show up below, so you can see now I've only got the one user and it's kind of duplicated. It looks a little silly in this instance, so I'll unpin it. But that's essentially it for the sidebar. There's some settings over here so we can get more granular, but you probably don't even need to touch those if you're just doing kind of the basic, you know, remote collaboration slash tech support. Our settings are very simple. We've got account settings, which are gonna be, you know, your username. You've got some activity information over here that shows how much you're using the application and who you've invited. There's even a profile section over here where you can make your profile public if you wanna to connect to users outside of your own work group. The way you set that to be internal or external is under workspace here, under user search, you can choose global, workspace internal, only for specific domains or disabled for all. If you disable this, it means no one will be able to find you. You'll have to know your username exactly. I think probably for most companies, the safe route will just be workspace internal. You know, there's always gonna be some security risk when we're doing things like remote sharing or screen access through the internet. So that's definitely something you want to be more on the conservative side of things than more aggressive. Kind of piggybacking on that idea under expertise here, you can list the skills that you have and then people can find you based on those skills. So if you are an expert in remote collaboration or tech support and you want to find people to hire you, I suppose you could fill out your skills over here and allow yourself to be found by all external users and then perhaps people go on here and search for people. I don't know if it works that way. For me, I'm gonna leave all of that stuff off. I don't really want to be available externally. But that's basically it. That's all there is to this tool. You can go ahead, get it installed in a few minutes and be connecting to a remote machine on the other side of the world and engaging you know, right away using the microphone to talk back and forth. I think it's a pretty sweet setup and especially for only 49 bucks or you know, if you spend a little bit more to get 10 users, it's like really great value. The only thing I would like to see personally, and it might be controversial and security people might correct me on why this is a bad idea, but let's say I have a machine with an application installed on it and I wanna have a user remote access into it to use that application. I think that would be really cool, especially if I could kind of you know, coordinate off so they only have access to that one application. That way I don't have to be there to allow them to use it. It would be more like a little server where they can log in and use a VM. The way the software is set up right now, you need to have a user at the machine to grant access every time someone takes control. So that is probably better for security, but not as convenient, especially in the scenario where you could have a machine really not allowed to do anything else, but just run one particular application. I do wanna add that I have been a user of TeamViewer in the past and I found the software to be pretty good, but I think ViewFlip is very comparable from my experience. Now, granted, I have not spent many, many hundreds of hours using TeamViewer, but overall, if you just need to make a few quick changes, well, I think this is a viable option. So when it's all said and done, I'm gonna give ViewFlip a 7.9 out of 10. If you wanna grab a copy, I've got a link down below in the description. If you like this video, make sure you hit like, 
Hit subscribe if you're new around here. Drop me a comment if you have any questions or maybe a correction. I could have gotten something wrong in this video. Otherwise, find me over on clientamp.com. Get signed up for the free email newsletter. Try one of our premium courses, and I'll see you in the next review.